Thanks for coming out to our second annual Facebook Social Good Forum. It's great to be in New York with all of you. Now, before we, uh, we get started today, I just want to say this is a really impressive group of people here. You know, we, um, some of the people here have, have individually saved hundreds of people's lives, have uh, mobilized thousands of volunteers, and have raised millions of dollars for important causes. So before we get started today, I just want to take a moment to, to say thank you to you for all of the, the important work that you're doing in your communities and around the world. So thank you. Now, we're here today to talk about how we can help you do even more. But first, I think it's important to take a moment to, to talk about why we were all doing is so important in the, in the first place. You're running organizations and doing things that are supporting families with kids with autism and grandparents with Alzheimer's. You're helping to teach uh, girls how to code and helping families overcome homelessness. Uh, you're feeding children who are hungry and standing up for the basic human rights of people all over the world. But everywhere that you work, you're not just doing the work, you're bringing people closer together. Right? You're giving people a sense of, of purpose and, and meaning. And, you know, this year I, I did this personal challenge to travel around and, and visit all the U.S. states I hadn't been to before. And my goal was really to get out of my, my own bubble in Silicon Valley and get a chance to hear from people directly about what matters to them. And I just wrapped up this challenge a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the biggest thing I really learned this year is that the sense of, of community is so much more important to people than what we normally discuss. This is something that I think a lot of you in this room already appreciate. Right? Everywhere you go, you know, people have stories about how communities help celebrate us when we're up, and they support us when we're down. And they give us the sense of, of purpose and belonging, that we are a part of something that is bigger than ourselves, that we're not alone. Uh, they give us the strength to expand our horizons beyond people in our immediate circles, so we can care about people in other places too. And, and look, and we don't all agree on everything. Right? That's not going to be a surprise to anyone here. But one thing that I found that a lot of people do agree on is that the thing that matters most to us in our lives is what's happening around us, with our family, and our friends, and, and in our communities. So what I appreciate about what all you are doing and the organizations you're running is that this focus on building community is something that you do every day. And I find it really inspiring. And, and I think that we can all learn something from the work that you're doing. And Because for all the different things that might try to pull people apart, if we can focus a little bit more on strengthening our communities, then that will help us build some more common ground and help us all move forward together. So this is something that I know that everyone in this room cares a lot about. And it's, um, and it's something that I think that Facebook can, can hopefully help make a difference in. So earlier this year, uh, we changed our whole company's mission. And for the first time in our history, we did this, uh, to now focus on helping to give people the power to build community to bring the world closer together. But we can't do this by ourselves. Uh, this, is a, this is a huge mission. So uh, you know, what, what our job really is, is to go see people who are already using this platform to do good, and then build tools to help you do even more. And the reality is, is that people have been using Facebook to make a difference for as long as these tools have existed. Usually they do this without talking to us. But it's a good reminder that a lot of the best things that happen aren't because some engineer in California started building something, but they start with someone somewhere who has an idea and is passionate about it and does what they need to do to make it real. So take fundraising for causes, uh, for example. You know, when I, when I started Facebook, I wasn't thinking about it as a way to raise money to fight disease. But you know, a few years in, we started noticing that people were using it to raise money for a lot of different causes, including uh, raising money to, for healthcare costs for a friend and for people uh, halfway around the world. Uh, Dr. Basil Termanini is, is here with us today. I had a chance to meet him yesterday. Doctor, where are you? There you go. Um, Dr. Termini works in Ohio, uh, but is originally from Syria, and, and his mother is, is still in Aleppo. And, and after uh, the attacks, he started a fundraiser on Facebook for the Syrian American Medical Society. And you raised one and a half million dollars for medical care for people over there. So. And, and he 
just said, you know, I, I just couldn't watch what was happening without doing something about it. So, you know, thank you. And, and over the years, people like Dr. Terminini have inspired us to build specific tools for helping people to raise money for in fundraising. And today we want to take this a step further. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do today is um, we're going to uh, eliminate all of the payment transaction fees that go towards uh, fundraising. <laughs> Susan G. Komen, Race for the Cure. And in the initial test that we've been running, uh, they've seen a more than 40% increase in the amount of money that they've been able to raise. So I'm really optimistic about this. I think this is going to be really excited, exci uh, exciting, and I'm, and I'm optimistic to get into more of your hands. So those are three steps that we're trying to take on, on fundraising. Now, in, in addition to raising money, uh, we've also seen people use these tools to help bring people together in times of a crisis. So several years ago, uh, after the, the Fukushima earthquake in Japan, uh, one of our engineers over there realized that a bunch of the people he knew in the disaster area were using Facebook to post uh, that they were safe, so their family and friends uh, could, could know that they were safe. Because when there's a disaster going on, the thing that's most important to you is just knowing that the people you care about are safe. So we started building this tool called Safety Check. And what it does is it automatically asks people in a disaster region if they're safe. And then it takes their response and it notifies all their friends and family. And so far, uh, since we launched Safety Check, it has notified people more than three billion times uh, that their friends and family are safe. Now, recently we've seen people want to do even more than just see whether people, whether the people they care about are safe. A lot of people want to know what people in a disaster area uh, need. So we built this tool, Community Help that what it does is it matches up uh, volunteers who might have food or shelter or other resources with the people in, in a region who need them. And the story is coming out of how people are using this uh, to bring people together and help each other are pretty incredible. So you know, yesterday I had the chance to meet uh, these two brothers, Nathan and, and Austin Seth, who are here today. Uh, and so they're, they're students at Texas A&M. And Nathan told me that uh, after Hurricane Harvey, he saw through community help a post from uh, someone who was trapped in the floods who needed to be rescued. So you called up Austin, you got in your boat, and rode up to Dickinson, Texas. And in one day, uh, you two single-handedly rescued 20 people. Community help uh, help them uh, reach some of these folks faster than even some of the first responders could. So thank you for, for what you, you did. It's amazing. Now today we want to take another step here too, right? So just like what we're doing with the fundraiser API, um, we want to open up the community help API so that way disaster relief organizations can get access to more of the the, the data that's uh, that's in the tool to help direct their resources towards the people who need them. So now. Uh, organizations like the Red Cross are going to have access to data from Community Help to see where people need certain resources. And they're going to have access to tools 
like our location tools and our network to make sure that their supplies are actually getting to the people who need them. So my hope here is that this is going to help some of you do your, your important jobs uh, maybe a little more easily. Now, we're also working on, on a few tools to help uh, make it easier for people to help each other with some specific challenges. So one example is that a lot of countries don't have enough blood donors uh, to provide everyone with reliable access to all of the safe blood that they need. Right, so we noticed that every week uh, there are thousands of posts in India alone of, of people asking uh, for blood donations. So a couple of months ago, we started working with experts and, and um, nonprofits and donors and blood banks uh, to build a tool that helps people register. And the way that it works is that uh, you can register to be a blood donor, and then you'll get notified through Facebook if, if a person or an organization uh, nearby needs a donation. And if you need blood, you can get connected with people who can potentially supply that donation. And, and so far, since we've launched this, more than 4 million people have registered to be blood donors. So now, uh, we're going to expand this to Bangladesh. And the goal is going to be to roll this out to more and more countries around the world where, where it's important. Now another tool, uh, another example of, of an important challenge that needs better tools is, uh, is suicide prevention. Because when, when you're trying to keep people safe, uh, speed is really important. So that's a place where tools can, can help out. So we started talking to experts in the area, and we started building some AI tools that can flag for our team and then flag for first responders, when people are posting on Facebook or expressing thoughts about suicide or self-harm, so we can help get them the help that they need quicker. And in the first month alone, or in the last month, uh, sorry, since we launched this in the US, uh, these tools have helped first responders uh, reach out and help more than 100 people who needed that support quickly. So now we're, we're starting to roll these tools out in most other countries around the world too, and that's something that I'm Really proud of the work there. So we've talked about a few ways to, that people are using Facebook to, to make a difference and help each other. From raising money to, uh, to organizing, to volunteering, to helping out with blood donations and suicide prevention. So I want to finish up today by talking about one more way uh, that I hope that people on, on Facebook can help each other out. And, and it's about mentorship. So one of the big lessons that I took away from my travel challenge this year is that our relationships really shape our lives a lot more than uh, I think we realize. And, and if our relationships can help us set our sights just a little bit higher, then we would all be better off for it. You know, I had this experience when um, I was in Indiana. And I went to this juvenile detention center, and I got a chance to meet some of the kids who were in there. And you know, some of them were in there for really serious, violent crimes, but others were in there because they were behaving badly in school. And you know, one of the heartbreaking things that, that I learned is that if you go to juvenile detention, you actually end up becoming more likely to commit a crime and end up in prison later uh, than you would have if you, you know, misbehaved similarly but not ended up being detained. So basically, if you think about it, we're building the wrong social network for those kids, right? The wrong relationships, and that is shaping their lives. Similarly, um, relationships shape economic mobility, uh, too. Right? So Raj Chetty at Stanford has done some really compelling research uh, that shows that one of the big factors in economic mobility is the community and the place that you grew up in. So I think that there's really something to this idea, that, that our relationships and the people around us help shape our path. Uh, a lot more than we may realize. And yet, uh, one piece of, of research that I also find pretty troubling is that the average American has fewer than three people that they consider a close friend who they feel like they can turn to for support. So that led me to sit down with our team and ask, you know, what can we do here? So that in addition to helping to connect people with people you may know, uh, that we can also help connect you with people you should know. And I think a big part of the answer is, is mentorship. So over, over the last couple of days, um, I had a chance to, to meet um, Kaylee and her mentor, Barry, uh, who are here today. Uh, stand up, guys. And so, um, <laughs> now, neither of Kaylee's parents had, had gone to college. And so the, the idea was pretty unfamiliar to her. 
um, until she met Barry, who's, our, who's her mentor, who she met through uh, this program I mentor that matches up adults who want to mentor with, um, with, with teenagers who, who, who want the support. And um, she said that Barry really opened her, her eyes to what college is and, and helped her out at every step along the way through the process. So when you were writing your college essay, um, Barry helped edit it while you were on your honeymoon, uh, she told me. Um, when, um, when, when you created a fundraiser to help raise money for college, Barry's family chipped in, and, and now you fast forward it, and, um, and Kaylee is, is at school at SUNY Geneseo, right here in, in, in New York, and is the first generation of her family to go to college. Now, uh, until now, you know, Facebook has, has mostly focused on helping connect us with people we already know. But I think it may be just as important uh, to help connect people with, uh, with people outside of their social circle to provide a new source of support uh, and inspiration. So that's why we're starting today uh, to test Facebook mentorship and support. So it's a new tool uh, that combines the expertise of nonprofits with the community of Facebook to help connect people who, who have shared experiences and shared goals, but who don't know each other yet in, 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 in life. And you know, the idea here is to make it easy for anyone to volunteer to be a mentor, or anyone to sign up to, to get a mentor um, if, if, they, if they want one. And for our initial test here, we're going to work with, with two uh, great nonprofits. I mentor, who I mentioned before. Uh, and the International Rescue Committee, who have many, many years of experience in, in education uh, and um, in crisis recovery. So here's how the program works. Right? Mentors and mentees are going to be matched by the nonprofit partners, and they're going to go through a custom step-by-step -step program that is also developed by the nonprofit partner on Facebook. And so this is an example here of, um, of iMentor's 24-week program to help get through your first year in college. And we're launching this uh, with them today. So eventually, the goal is going to be to expand this uh, to more to help connect more people and more partners and uh, have more different kinds of programs. And uh, this is something I'm really optimistic about, and I look forward to sharing more with you soon. So, you know, one of the things that, that I find um, is just really inspiring is that the Facebook community it's full of people who, who need help, but but it's also full of people who want to give. Through organizing and volunteering and raising money, and sometimes just being there for someone. And there's no doubt that, that we live in, in a challenging time right now. But one of the things that strikes me so much is the deep sense of optimism that you all have. Right? This belief that even in the face of real challenges, right? disease, poverty, hunger, that every one of us can make a difference. One of my favorite sayings is that there are two kinds of people in the world, optimists and pessimists. And the saying goes that optimists tend to be successful, and pessimists tend to be right. <laughs> and the idea is that if you think that something's going to be terrible and it's going to fail, then you're going to look for the data points that prove you're right, and you'll find them. Right? That's what pessimists do. But, but if you think that something is possible, then you're going to try to find a way to make it work. And, and even when you make mistakes along the way, and even when people doubt you, you're going to keep pushing until you find a way to make it happen. And what I appreciate about all of you is that you're the optimists. You're the ones who will drop anything to lend, lend people a hand, to support a good cause, to make people's lives just a little bit easier. And you're not doing it for the credit or recognition. You just want to help. That's the community spirit. Right? That's what makes us stronger. Not the technology we build or the media we all share. It's, it's all of you. And it's our responsibility to help you do more. So that's what today is all about. And I want to thank you all for being out here today. And I want to thank you all for everything that you do for your communities and for the world every single day. It is an honor to be here with you and to be on this journey with you. Thank you so much.